and said, thank you. We're talking about the prophetic day with, and still I say, my brother and my sister, it's a time of crossover. And I challenge you about your own personal life, that in December, you'll have this time with God about next year, or in this season even. Say, God, what are you saying to me? What is your heart for next year? What do you have for me? Get into that place with God. Seek Him. Not just to know everything you need to do, but seek Him for who He is. Say, God, more of you. More of you like never before next year. Amen. Let it be so. We're talking about crossing over dynamics. We've spoken already about some of it. And uh, the question would be, in what way do I need to cross over? Allow God to speak to you. Get a word, my brother, my sister, about your relationships about your attitude, about your thought patterns, about your finances, about your circumstances, about the possible successes, about your vision. Get a word from God in every facet. Hallelujah. Let his word come in and have the final say. And then he will show you in what way do you need to cross over to the other side. Because there could be a lot of things that you need a breakthrough in. In relationship or in your emotions or in your finances. But to go into the Canaan of his provision, into the Canaan of what he has for you about provision. This side of the Jordan, you need a word from God already. A word from God already. Because without that word, there is no Canaan. Canaan is a curse without the word. The word that you take in your heart before you cross the Jordan. Before crossing over, the word needs to be established in your heart. Amen. Otherwise, Canaan will get a voice, and that voice will take you away from God's voice. May God help us. Okay, we are with Joshua 3. Can you go with me there, please? Verse 1. Early in the morning, Joshua and all the Israelites set out and went to the Jordan, where they camped before crossing over. First point. Understand camping. Before crossing over. Hello. You need to understand how to camp. Hello. Are you with me? Nobody. You're not a camper. <laughs> okay. The problem is, sometimes when we see the breakthrough, we are here. We are at the breakthrough. We are, can have our breakthrough right now. We don't want to stop. And here we come into that place after hundreds of years, and there God says, camp on this side of the Jordan. Camp here just before you get your breakthrough. And sometimes some guys in the past, not us anymore, in Jesus' name, would then think about what's on the other side. And some would rather stay this side of the Jordan longer until they understand what's going to happen on the other side. Until you understand exactly what God's going to do in your finances, in your job, in your relationships. I'm not going to press in. I, I first need to understand what is going to happen on the other side. But many times God's not going to tell you. And you can bind the devil because he's causing you not to hear God's voice. But God is not going to tell you. Because sometimes, so many times, he wants you just to be, to be drawn closer without even knowing what is going to happen. Because he's pleased when you walk by faith. As we always say, Amen. So this camping can become a thing where I'm very comfortable. Some of us in the past, I've seen it in my life, you see the promises, you know the prophetic words, you know what God has for you, but it's as if you never get to the place of entering. It's that you, you are with it, you, you have it, it's there, but there's just not that breakthrough. But maybe you must first just focus on this side of the Jordan. And not just focus there on the promises and that what God has for you. And the vision there. Just take that moment, this side of the Jordan. To make sure you're going with God into the vision. With God into the breakthrough. With God into that what he has for you. You with me? Number two. Question. Who are the leaders giving orders in the camp? What are we talking about? Verse 2. After three days, the officers went throughout 
the camp. After three days, hey, only three days of camping. Throughout the camp, giving orders to the people. When you see the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord, your God, and the Levitical priests carrying it, you are to move out from your positions and follow it. What are we talking about? First of all, who's the leader speaking in your heart? Who's the leaders? Who's the people you are mingling with? Who's the people? So easily, if I can have criticism, I saw that in my life, even especially when I was a student. When I get some criticism, criticism in my heart, you won't believe it, but it's just like this. Then there's somebody also with some other question mark about something or someone that's with me. You can see that in your heart. The people that are drawn to you with certain issues or with certain way of thinking, certain way of, will tell you what's in your heart. Uh, so be careful. Don't, don't get out of that place where they are, but bring in truth. Even for your brother and your sister, bring in the truth. Bring in the truth. Are you with me? May God help you. But I'm asking, who's the leaders giving the orders in the camp? Because there can be leaders in your life giving the orders in, in the camp of your life. The leaders of you need to understand what's happening. That leader of stress, but you must first deal with the stress. You must first deal with that. You must first deal with that. With all these stuff. Performance. Hello. What are you giving a voice and giving authority to be a leader in the camp? To determine how things will work. But the Holy Spirit will always bring you back to God. And these leaders went with the truth and said, when you see God, when you see his presence, and you see the people carrying his presence, then immediately you will respond. So they had to learn how to see God where he is. And me and you, if we now in our lifestyle learn how to seek God, we better do that because if we must know when he's moving, how can I know when he's moving if I don't know even where he is? Hello? As you limit me. So may God open our eyes through the Holy Spirit. May you get into the word. May you get into prayer. May you get into focus so that, so that you cannot, you're not so used to see the problems. Some people. Not anymore. In the past. So used to see the challenge. So used to see the negativity. So you used to see that, that sin of that person. So used to see when somebody hurt you. So used to see when somebody is going to disappoint you. So used to see certain stuff. But when are we getting into the place, I'm so used to see God. And when he's moving and when he's not. When he's working, when he's standing still, that I must just go and sit with him. I need to get used to his presence. I need to get used to seeing God in my circumstance. Who's the leaders giving the orders in your camp? Number three, focus to be ready to move. When you see, what did we read just now? Hey, giving orders to the people. When you see the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord your God, then, and them carrying it, you are to move out from your positions. So first of all, he said that you must get ready. We must get ready. Hallelujah. Focus to be ready to move. Okay, so focus to be ready means I put a certain attention on something. I can be busy, we can be busy with a lot of stuff. And then when people say, okay, the time is now here, just wait. When you see that man gives you the sign, then you move. What does that mean? You position yourself in such a way, you get yourself so ready that you don't have to focus on getting ready. But you get yourself in such a place that you can focus on him for when he moves. Get yourself ready in the word, through the word. Get this, the, 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 the issue sorted out so that you don't have to focus on the issue to sort out the issue, to sort out the fear, to sort out the confusion, to sort out the whatever you say. 
get that sorted out. Otherwise, you must just stay in that camp and that camp must become your life. Just, just like a few meters before your breakthrough. And you must sit there because you don't know how to get past all this stuff to focus on him. And if he's staying and if he's moving. When you see. Everybody say, when I see. When you see that guy is doing that again, immediately you start to have an issue. When you see things are just starting to get rough, then you feel that stress again. When you see that person responding in that way, immediately you start to fear the rejection again. When you see, why can we be so quick to see certain things and not necessarily so quick to see God moving or God standing? God must purify our lives in Jesus' name. Amen. When you see the Ark of the Covenant carrying the Ark, the Levites, you are to move out from your positions and follow. Where are we now? Number four, move out from your positions. What, are you, what is he saying? My brother, my sister, you will position yourself in a certain way. In the camping, in your waiting on God, in your waiting, in your working, in that what you do, you are positioned in a certain way. But when you will see his presence, there will be some movement. Somewhere in some other way in our lives, there will be also always progression, always progression for that what God has for you tomorrow. Because God will challenge you for more of him, less of you. God will challenge you to come closer to, to him and, and away from the flesh and the fears and the world. Hello? So God is ready to act, get ready to work. But for that... I need to understand how to move out from my position. But I can stay in my position, in my camping, and first see what is happening with Canaan. Because I heard mom and dad saying, yeah, yeah, they, they, those giants, they're going to eat us. Those giants are going to be like this, 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 this. Oh, but mom and dad also said we must not moan and groan. We must obey. We must just go with what God has for us. We had to learn from their mistakes also, yes. But I first just need to see, because we sit with the river there, and the river, it's close. I know in the past, Moses, you know, he God just did it through him, and we, we crossed through the Red Sea. But what about this river? I don't see anything. I don't see Moses going ahead and, and doing something there. It's just this, these priests were ark that must go and walk towards this river that is so full. Hey, overflowing. What are we talking about? Will you stand in your position until you see, oh, there's a breakthrough, how we can get through the Jordan? Or will you walk towards the Jordan that is full and you don't know how we're going to go get through it, but you walk into your dead end, into the place where there's a dead end, and you don't know how I'm going to do further, but if God is walking in that direction, you walk in that direction. If you want to have your breakthrough. But you cannot walk without God into your breakthrough. Amen. God will help us. Number five. Follow his presence. Joshua 3 verse 3. Same. Follow his presence. Not following the fact that I know. Not follow your vision. You can have an excellent vision. You are, you are at the point of breakthrough. But don't cross your Jordan. Don't cross your breakthrough. Don't get into what God has promised you and God is having it in his hand. If God is not moving, you watch the presence. You don't watch the Jordan opening up or not opening up. You watch his presence when you're at the point of absolute, absolute breakthrough. Follow his presence. Number six. Now, You'll know the way to go, even if you never worked it, walked it before. That is verse 4. Then, you are to move out from your positions and follow it. Then you will know which way to go. Since you have never been this way before. Then you will know. Okay, God says, I'm going to take you in a place... Where you've never been. 
You've never walked this way before. And you will not know the way until you follow his presence. And when you follow his presence, you will understand the way. But normally we want to see the way first and then go by faith. No, no, then you saw already. You don't have to go by faith. But go by faith is, I follow his presence, but I don't know where we're going. But as I'm going, I understand the way. I see the way that we are going now. <laughs> After I got into the place of obeying and walking with him. Please, let us not try to understand before the time. Amen. Ah, uh, amen. amen. Number seven. He says, yeah, you've never been this way before. But, 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 but keep a distance of about 2,000 cubits between you and the ark. Do not go near it. What are we talking about? Understand the respect that you must have for God. Understand your place in his presence. Now today... Yes, like they carried as priests the ark. Today, you are the priests. Hello? And his presence is in you. So how can you keep your distance? No. Make sure you walk with respect. And if I must follow a certain specific distance, I'm, I need to know where he is. Hello? Because he's stopping, so I stop. He's moving, he's going faster, he's going slower, so I will go because I must keep a specific distance. He's going to the left, I'm going to the, he's going to the right. Hello? Keep your specific distance. Walk in a certain way where you, the whole time in your lifestyle, in your walk, focus on him. He's not just releasing you and letting you go. Now you go into your breakthrough with one focus. His pace, where you stop, you stop. Where you walk, where you go quicker, where you, where you slower, where you turn, you go. Keep your specific distance. Have respect. Have respect for his presence. Amen. Are you still with me? Those seven points I want to tell you. Say to you, please, my brother, my sister, let's do this by faith. Now, the last seven points. Now, we're taking a little bit more. <clears throat> First one, consecrate, position yourself. For tomorrow, God will do something. God will do something. Okay. Joshua told the people, consecrate yourselves. For tomorrow, the Lord will do amazing things among you. Consecrate, position yourself. It's also set yourself aside. Consecrate is I, I bind myself to this, this thing. I am committed. I'm faithful towards what? So I position myself and I consecrate myself. I give myself over and surrender to him for he is going to do something. Are you with me? So you take his hand and you make sure you don't have the hand of your success or, or your reasoning. You don't have the hand of, of, your, break, of your, your successes or your failures or your negativity or your trying to be in control. You're not taking the hand of that thing, those things. Take his hand. Consecrate. Position yourself. Why? For tomorrow, we're not just going to Canaan. Because tomorrow... God's going to do something. Not because we're standing at the Jordan, therefore consecrate yourself. No. Because God's going to do something tomorrow, therefore consecrate yourself. Amen. Make sure you're focusing on him. Focus on God in the amazing things that he'll do among us. We basically said it actually already, but that in your breakthrough, in that what God will be doing, you, God must be the focus. In the success, God must be the focus. In the blessings, he must be the focus. When you focus away from God and you focus on the blessings, the blessings will be a curse. If you receive Canaan, but God is not, God is not the focus of your Canaan, Canaan will be the curse. Are you with me? Focus on God in the amazing things he'll do among us. Amen. Hallelujah. Connect with his presence in the moving. Don't connect with your fears. Don't connect with the stress. Don't connect with your success. Don't, first of all, even connect with your faith. Connect with Him. 
Fear not for I'm with you. How many times? In the word. Yes. But fear is gone. Boldness is there. Guidance is there. You will walk because of his presence. You need to understand how to connect with his presence. Not just I have time with God so that I can find answers. I'm seeking his face for the answers. No, I'm first seeking him. Connect with him. Amen. Still with me? Oh, hallelujah. Great. Lead. Go ahead with them in his presence. I say. Number four. Lead. Go ahead of them with his presence. Go ahead of him. What are we talking about? No. Joseph said to the priest, take up the Ark of the Covenant and pass on ahead of the people. So they took it up and went ahead of them. You need to lead. But wherever you lead as a leader, my brother, my sister, as a priest, you lead with his presence. You cannot go ahead of the people if you're not going with his presence. That's what you carry, carry, the presence of God that you carry. With the presence of God, you need to lead. You need to lead. And they need to see the presence of God on your life. They can see the presence of stress, maybe. Not one of us. The presence of anxiety. The presence of, oh, here comes something, you know. You can see he's totally in anger or, you know, some other term. Oh, look at that man. That man is in depression again, you know. Here, here comes depression and the man will follow. <sighs> or oh, somebody must look at you. And God must help me. I hope you ask that also, that God will help you. That when we go into the place, they must see the presence of God. They must come aware of the presence of God, the presence that you carry. Let it be so, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Number five, stand to proclaim His presence in the breakthrough for the nation. That's verse Seven and eight. And the Lord said to Joshua, Today I will begin to exalt you in the eyes of Israel, and they, that they may know that I am with you as I was with Moses. Tell the priest to carry the Ark of the Covenant. When you reach the edge of the Jordan's waters, go and stand in the river. When you reach the edge. And in the verse further, when they, their feet touched the water, when they entered the water. What are we saying? My brother, my sister, you are supposed to be and will be, going to be the type of priest that will carry his presence. Amen. And that you must go ahead. The church in the nations, the priest, the kingdom of priests must go ahead for the breakthrough for the nation. Bluefontaine must break through because the churches, more and more, they will focus on God. Less and less issues with one another. You find very spiritual people, and they've, uh, sometimes those very spiritual people there, they can tell you all the issues with all the churches. You call them Pharisees. They, say they are far from seeing what God is seeing. Hello. May God help them. May God help us. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. But we need to respect the churches. It doesn't matter in, in the sense of, oh, what's the right word? Respect the churches because, first of all, you look at the Christ in the person, not at the what the, this they are not doing right, that they are not doing right. Hello. Uh, but if we can make God the focus because this nation that need to cross, they had some issues still. Everybody perfect, everybody holy, cross the Jordan. <laughs> no. These guys, the church, the kingdom of priests, Get into the water. You walk into that place where you see no breakthrough. There's no Moses opening the water. You just walk. And as you, as you get into the water, things will happen. And then you don't go through. Church of Christ, you don't grow through to the other side. You stay in the breakthrough till everybody got their breakthrough. So if the church will mature and we will become those type of priests that will carry his presence, we will stand in that place for Bluefontaine to break through, for the nation to break through. And so the nations will break through, through the birthing in prayer, what the church will bring. When the church is not running just for their own Canaan, but if the church mature to be, to be willing to stand in that place of breakthrough for the nation to break through. 
And they are not even standing there, the priest with the, with, with the ark, to come to encourage the guys to go, to go, and to go, and to do this right, and to do that right. They were just standing with his presence. May his presence be on our lives in such a way that people have the courage to go through for what God has for them. And you know his kingdom will be established, but understand the church will pray, your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. But when his kingdom is ruling in Bloemfontein, it does not mean that everybody is serving him. Every knee will bow, every tongue will confess. Like even the demon will confess. And the demon will bow. Not in worship, but they will bow. His rule will be there. So the authority of God can be over the place. The fear of God can be over Bluefontein without everybody in Bluefontein serving him. But because the church is standing with his presence. Standing with his presence for Bluefontein to move over, to cross over. For what God has established and, and ordained for Bluefontein to have. For this nation. If we can leave the issues about this and about that and about. And with all things with the corruption or the this or the racism or the whatever we want to call it. But get into the place that the church will mature. Then the nations will break through. The church in Ukraine, the church in Russia can stand before the Lord. Hello. So that the nation can come through and move into more destruction. No, move into more fear, move into more revenge, into more bitterness. Into, because those demonic rabbis from hell are being established in many facets in those nations right now. But uh, somewhere the church needs to rise and say, not anymore. It will not happen anymore in Jesus' name. For that we need to be a certain type of priest. As we are called as kingdoms, a kingdom of priests to reign with Christ forever and ever and ever as kings and priests. Amen. Okay, where are we now? Number six. I need you to help me, it seems to me. Come closer to listen, hear and obey God's word before crossing. Oh man, it's the time to cross over and now you must listen to another sermon. Can you believe it? It's the moment of truth to break through, to go, to cross. Uh, and he, le, let's have a sermon first. <laughs> yeah, wonderful. Verse 9 and 10. Verse 9 and 10. Joshua said to the Israelites, come here and listen to the words of the Lord your God. This is how you will know that the living God is among you. That he will certainly drive out all these other guys before you. What are we saying? God wants you to know that it's about him. That you will not go for your breakthrough, but that you will remember when you have success. When you have success, that you will always remember it was your God. It was him. It was not about you. It was not your everything that you did right. It was God and God alone. And so for the breakthrough, it will be in the nations. My brother, my sister, yes, the scripture says, like you all know, the turmoil will be there. It will be like a dead end. There will be wars and rumors of wars. And there will be all these rubbish happening and, and, and famines and, and people dying of a lot of stuff. Everything will be shaken. Demonic control would come. 666 and all this other stuff will happen in the world. Hello? But... That is not the end. That is not the end. And we can look at all those stuff. We can look at the Jordan and the flood and the everything. But that is not the end. Then that verse, like we always remind ourselves, and the, and the gospel will be preached to all the nations, and then the end will come. And then the end will come. When the church will mature to rise up for breakthrough for the nations, then the end will come. Because... Jesus is not coming for some wara wara bride, with all respect. Jesus is coming back for a victorious bride that will stand with victory, that will stand in the nation, doesn't matter the cost. If there's a lot of martyrs, if there's this, if there's that, if there's whatever, but the church will be victorious. There will be a type of priests that will, it will not be about them. 
A type of priest that will be willing to stand in the Jordan. Now, not just run for their own Canaan. But stand that the nation will inherit Canaan. And go into destiny. May God bless you with an unselfish life. Okay. That's that one. Where are we now? Seven. Seven. <laughs> when the priest who carried his presence entered the water, the flood had no authority. The flood had no authority. What are we talking about? Verse 14. So when the people broke camp to cross the Jordan, deal with where you stand, the priest carrying the Ark of the Covenant went ahead of them. Now the Jordan is at flood stage all during the harvest intimidating yet as soon as let's say yet as soon as yet as soon as the priest who carried the ark reached the jordan and their feet touched the water's edge the water from upstream stopped flowing boom just happened it didn't just happen. God will make a way where there seems to be no way. And you pray and you, and you pray and the way opened and there you entered. No. You pray for the way you pray and you walk by faith with no way that opened. Looks like there's going to be no breakthrough in this relationship. No breakthrough. In, but you start to walk by faith. Because God is walking into that, into that relationship, into that situation, into your financial challenge. God is walking into that place. You better walk with him. Hello? And as soon, as soon as they came there. Now there's a scripture. My brother and my sister says the enemy, when the enemy comes in like a flood, God will raise the standard in the New Testament. So when will you see? So that when the enemy comes in like a flood to discourage you and to say, there's no inheritance that you will take. There's no, nothing of that promise. It will not happen. Coming like a flood in front of you. You watch his presence. Don't look at the flood. Don't look at the, the overflow of the Jordan. Don't look at the intimidation. But make sure you go with his presence. You focus on his presence. If you respect him. Are you with me? And you move. And as soon as the priests, the ones, they were, the type of children of God, the type of priest who carry these presents in a certain way, when that, those type of priests, when they touched the Jordan, when they touched the intimidation, when you touch, start to touch your dead end, it just moved open. And God raised the standard. You focus on God. You focus on, on obedience. You, you, you honor him in spite of whatever. You focus on him. And he will raise the standard. He will stop the enemy. He will stop the flood. Those things that want to come over you. That you think. You see yourself with all those stuff over you. Uh-uh. God will just psh, and stop. But then you need to walk into that place. Not first see if there is a breakthrough. If there is a way. He will make the way as you follow the way called Jesus Christ. Uh, hello? He will make the way as you follow the way that's called Jesus Christ. Amen? As soon as the church, I want to end off with that one. As soon as the church who carries, as soon as the church who carries his presence, will move in obedience by faith. The nations will enter their destiny. Will enter their destiny. One of the prophets, God says, said through the prophet, that the church can hasten his coming. We will not know the day when he is coming, no. But it can be hastened in, when the church grow up in maturity. The challenge is not when all the signs in the world will happen. The sign is in the church. Is when the church will grow up. When we will mature. And when it's about him. And his presence. For knowing him, that's eternal life. Are you with me? Hallelujah. 
I pray that God will speak to you, my brother, my sister, and I pray that you will really get a hunger for his presence. I think last week they, they used the word about set up. And uh, that you can have a setback in your life or, or there can be a set up. And a set up is not an ambush. But God is going to set you up. This whole thing was a set up. Are you with me? Your flesh could say this is a set up. And God had a set up there like with, with the Red Sea also. He organized the set up. He organized that the, the Jordan will be in flood. He organized that all those stuff will be there. He organized in that set up this is how it will work and that his presence will go ahead and they need to learn how to focus on him in the breakthrough. It was a set up. There will be a set up for your flesh where you will ambush. There will be ambush for your, for your flesh but the set up will be God's ordained plan for your life. He will set you up. Are you with me? Like they say, he set you up for a meeting. A meeting he set up for a specific time, for a specific moment, for a certain agenda. God has certain agendas for you tomorrow, next year. And they will be a set up. Meetings will be set up by him, by the Holy Spirit for you. Are you going to miss it or are you not going to miss it? You can see there's a setup from hell to ambush you. A setup from hell. Certain demonic uh, rubbish assigned for you to, to, to be destroyed for that what God has for you. But a thousand times more, if his presence is with you. If God is for you, who can be against you? Doesn't matter the setup, ambush from hell. God has set you up for breakthrough. God has set you up for breakthrough. But in the setup, there's one key for every setup that God brings you in. That is, see his presence, follow his presence, respect his presence, and stand with his presence for others to break through. God, come and help us. We need you. Lord, and thank you even as we partake in communion. We know we can have this road, we can have these breakthroughs, we can have this understanding how to see you and to follow your presence only through the blood. Come and cleanse us, please, Lord, as we open our lives, as we surrender at the cross, our everything to you. God, we need you, and without and your name, without the cross, without the blood, there's no way that we can stand in your presence because you're a consuming fire. Help us, Lord. Help us, Lord. As you guide us right now, every man, every woman, what they need to confess, what they need to deal with right now, that you will come and, and do a thing, a special, a special work in their hearts, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. So we pray. If you're a child of God and you know your life is right with God, we want to invite you to partake with us in communion. And, uh, yeah, and let's do this then with the Lord. Amen. I read from 1 Corinthians 11.